Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody, Coast to Coast, This Week in America. The greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by how its animals are treated. The words of Mahatma Gandhi, each and every life has value and purpose. Sapphire, a kitten of less than a day old, was abandoned and thrown into a dumpster on a cold winter's night. Rescued and raised by her human parents and has grown into a happy, playful cat that gives her owners much happiness and joy. Little did her new human owners know that Sapphire had a secret that they would soon find out. That's the storyline in the delightful children's book, Sapphire, A Life That Almost Wasn't, by Lori Blitch. Lori has an impressive and diverse career in nursing and as a business owner. She's the owner of Magellan Christian Academies for the past 20 years in Phoenix, Arizona and Jacksonville, Florida. Her schools have won numerous awards, including Declaration of the Magellan Day by the mayor of Jacksonville, Florida, Featured as a top woman in business in Jacksonville as well, a published author of children's books, achieving Book of the Month status on Amazon. Her experience in nursing is impressive. Critical care, trauma, cardiovascular intensive care, toxicology, administration and management, nursing professor, medical legal nursing and field hospital nursing, a nurse educator for the Banner Health System in Phoenix, responsible for the education of multiple service lines, Laurie has served her country honorably, Navy officer for 20 years, lectures nationally, internationally on nursing topics, and she sits on the board of directors of the Banyan School, New Delhi, India. She lectures on the dangers of academia's indoctrination establishment and the importance of returning to traditional academic learning. Laurie Blitch, author of Sapphire, A Life That Almost Wasn't, is our special guest on This Week in America. Lori, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Well, uh, good morning out here in Phoenix, and uh, good afternoon to you in uh, uh, Florida. Yeah, we've but got thank a, you for having me on. We've got a couple hours head start on the day here, but you've got a couple more hours at the end of the day, so it probably all works <laughs> out when, when, when it's all said and done. What an impressive background and so many topics that we can talk about. And we'll focus on the book today because it's such a delightful book that is really impacting not only children but adults all across the country. But I, I'm fascinated by the business background that you've, you've involved yourself in and, and your success in doing that. Uh, talk about the business that you own, because talk about touching lives. You're doing it in a very special way with these children. Uh, yes, uh, I do. Uh, we've literally had thousands of students that come through our doors uh, that have graduated from our kindergarten prep program, and they go on to um, um, elementary school, and some of them just bypass kindergarten altogether, and, and once they test and go to the first grade. But we take the academics seriously because education is very, very important at an early age to children, um, rather than just parking them in front of a TV, um, but putting them in a classroom where they can learn, um, you know, we teach them also science and math at a very young age to develop that part of their brain. So, um, but yes, uh, we, we've had thousands of students and each year we graduate and it's my numbers out here in Phoenix have really grown uh, the number of students that we graduate. Uh, one, one of my campus alone, I graduate almost 60 students every year that go on to uh, kindergarten and some of them bypass kindergarten and go to first grade. So um, we teach uh, Christian values um, at our school because it is Magellan Christian Academies. We uh, teach them, uh, like I said, uh, science and math. Uh, we're very heavy into the language arts, the phonics, because we believe strongly in the phonics, teaching children how to read and to properly read. Um, so we don't always follow by what other schools do. So we've had great success in that. So I take pride in this and my teachers and my my administration, they're absolutely wonderful and um, they do a great job. And you should take pride in what you're doing. Again, as I say, impacting so many children and giving them the proper foundation to go on to a successful educational career and also go on into, into the professional lives after they graduate. So many people start businesses. Some are successful, some are not. You've been incredibly successful in a number of ways with your business. What are some of the keys that you feel are important to having a successful business, maybe keys that you've implemented during your, your career? 
Well, opening this company 20 years ago, uh, it, 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 um, it, it takes a lot of thought to go into it. And you just can't walk into a bank and say, hey, I need a loan. They want to look at mission statements, values, philosophy. They want to look at a lot of different things before they would even give you a business loan. But one thing that I think a lot of Americans look at is, you know, you have these infomercials on TV where you see somebody who has this beautiful South Florida home, this man or this woman are sitting in their backyard of this South Florida home with a yacht in the backyard <laughs> and a Lamborghini in the driveway. Yes. They said, be your own boss, own your own business. <laughs> and it bears no resemblance to, to what business owners uh, can uh, aspire to. Yes. And, uh, but the, the, the things that it really takes, and, and the vast majority of businesses go under the first two years. But it takes a tremendous amount of hard work, dedication, getting up in the morning. And even when you don't want to do it, you just have to force yourself to go back in there, get back in the fight, and just keep moving forward, staying very focused and disciplined. It takes a tremendous amount of capital to get into a business, depending on what type of a business you get into. So uh, you have to be intimately involved with your business. It's not a business owner where you can just leave it and let your employees run the business. You have to be very involved into the business, every aspect of it. So a business uh, takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of dedication. Uh, and uh, it takes a lot of capital uh, in, in a business. And also businesses ebb and flow when the economy uh, oh, yes. each, each several years we go into a recession and then we come out of a recession. So you have to be a smart business owner to, to weather those times when the economy is not as good. So it takes a lot of ingenuity on the part of a business owner to keep it going. Talk about the evolution of, of your business. I'm sure what it is today is not necessarily what it was five years ago, 10 years ago, probably not even close to what you imagined when you started the business. Talk about being flexible, being able to adapt as situations change. It does. And, you know, the regulatory environment of both the federal government and state governments have a tremendous impact on businesses. And and I know a lot of people, even just looking at minimum wage, when people, hey, let's raise minimum wage, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, let's raise minimum wage to $15, $20 an hour, but they don't understand on the business side of it, it has an impact. And they they look at, well, let's pay them all $15 an hour. Well, that's great. And that's wonderful in theory, but in practice and reality, it's, it, it's not very feasible, especially when you have a lot of fast food places where they, you know, that price of a hamburger last week when minimum wage was $10, now it's $15 this week. Well, now the price of that hamburger goes up by another $1.50 this week. So in reality, they're not really making any great strides. They're really actually losing money in the long run. But most people don't see that. They just see what's right before them and they don't see the whole picture. So the regulatory environment and regulations are very detrimental to any business. And um, it's, it, it has a profound impact on the way you do business <clears throat> and, for, you know, just whatever politicians sign in as far as legislation. So it will have an impact as far as should I expand my business this year? Should I wait another year or two years to expand my business. So um, it has a, a tremendous impact. Um, so those are things that we always look at as um, yes. business owners and all business owners around the country look at it. And, and, the, and the vast majority of people in the country are, are employed by small businesses, not big by corporate America. No, it's interesting because you've been successful with the two locations, Phoenix and Jacksonville. You talk about the economic climate, how that's changing. Any plans to expand in, in the near future? I am. I'm currently working on another place in uh, Phoenix right now to expand. And I'd like to expand a little bit more here in Phoenix and uh, uh, get started going again in Jacksonville, Florida. But uh, the Phoenix market is a, is a great market market. Uh, um, a lot of population here in Phoenix and the state government has a good uh, uh, climate for businesses to come out here and want to do business. So that's, that's a big important decision for any 
a company to want to relocate to a state is what the business climate is of that state. With us on the program is Lori Blitch. She's the author of the uh, delightful children's book, Sapphire, A Life That Almost Wasn't. So successful in other aspects of her life, besides the publishing, we'll talk about the book here in a second, but business success, uh, great success in the career of, uh, of educating children. Also, I mentioned in the beginning, Banner Health System in Phoenix. You're very instrumental in the success they are having in teaching people. Talk about your work with Banner. Well, currently I'm a uh, nurse educator at uh, the Banner Health System in Phoenix, Arizona. It's a pretty large health system. It has about 28 hospitals. They're building another one currently. Um, And um, they have a pretty robust education for their nurses and other other, uh, employees that come aboard Banner. I'm uh, involved in uh, the education of multiple service lines. Um, And not only that, I cross over things outside of nursing into many other departments that I help out with education. Education is so fundamental to any company. Uh, You have to have education so that people can be able to do their jobs adequately, um, especially in hospitals where you can improve patient outcomes. I uh, partner with uh, physicians that come aboard Banner and to help them get education going so that we could educate our other staff and the nurses. And the patient outcomes are so much better. The communication between um, the entire team is greatly improved. Uh, Resources are put out there. So it's, I have found it's been a really good collaborative approach, but Banner again is very supportive of education and it's uh it's really quite quite a blessing to work here someday when you've got i don't know two three four hours we could get together again and talk about education and, and then another <laughs> couple of hours talking about business so many fascinating aspects of your life Lori blitz with us on the program author of the book sapphire a life that almost wasn't so let's talk about these cats how did this whole inspiration for this charming children's book come about Well, uh, as I stated in other interviews and in the book, uh, it was a January, February timeframe in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, I own two of the largest, uh, second and third largest schools in Northeast Florida. I had a little over 500 students and 65 employees. My janitor went out into a dumpster or to empty the day's trash into the dumpster. It was a cold night. It was about 36 degrees. It's kind of unusual that it gets that cold in Florida, unless you're in the panhandle. And he heard this faint meowing coming from the dumpster. Um, and he looked around. The, the, it was kind of rustling the, the leaves on the trees. And so he put the lid down, he tried to go back to the school, and then he looked down. He hadn't emptied all the trash. He went back, opened it, the lid up, and he heard it again, this meowing. He looked to his right, and he saw this little tiny, tiny box that had been intentionally taped. So he looked at him. He said, now that's kind of odd. So he picked it up, shook it gently, and he heard this real faint uh, meow from there. So he brought it into my school. And my school nurse, Nurse Sue, um, was working. And so we all sat down on the floor and opened, untaped this box. And when we opened it, these two tiny little kittens, they were, they had to have been born that day. Uh, when I took them to the vet the next day, they weighed 0.2 and 0.3 ounces. They were, they literally fit in the palm of my hand and they, uh, their eyes were still closed. Uh, they were shivering so hard. I knew they were very hypothermic. I don't think they probably would have made it another hour. They were just so incredibly cold. So I ran and heated up towels in my a microwave of my school kitchen and put the cats on them. My school nurse got us syringes and warmed up some milk and we fed these cats and they fell asleep. So I took them home. Um, and it's just like a baby. You're up every what, couple of hours feeding exactly, them. So yes. I was up about every hour and a half <laughs> feeding these cats, warming up cows and, <laughs> and keeping them warm. And I did this for several weeks and took, I took them to the vet the next day and he said, Hey, you thought he'd make, they would make it. And, and, uh, so I had to, um, just give them special formula that designed for kittens. So I did this for several weeks. My school nurse did this for several weeks. And, uh, so they got to that, to the point where we litter trained them, everything was done. And we were, they were about eight months and I went ahead and got them spayed and neutered and all their immunizations were done. 
one of my employees came to me and she wanted one of the caps. And so I said, well, which one do you want? And she chose it. And, uh, um, I said, but you got to promise to keep it in your home. Uh, I don't want it running free because cats will get in the street and they get hit by a car and their yes. longevity of their life significantly decreases when they're outside. So she agreed. She took that cat. Nobody really wanted my other cat, Sapphire. And, um, but little did anybody know Sapphire was home at me one day and she was, uh, um, she was hitting walls and furniture. I was in another room and I went in there, I put my fingers in front of her eyes to see why she was doing that, but she really didn't have eyelids. So she wouldn't blink. So I turned her to the vet and I told the vet, I said, you know, I think she's blind. <laughs> he said, you know, I agree with you. She is blind, but I said, she's, uh, got to have some eyelids. She can't really blink. Um, and she can't really close her eyes all the way. So he says, well, I'm really not sure what to do about eyelids. And I said, well, she has to have something. She's got to close them. Yes. So I said, let's take some tissue from her abdomen and, uh, creates my lids. And that's what we did. And we were a little, it was a little touch and go wondering if the, uh, the tissue would actually take or not. And it did in about 10 to two weeks, it was looking really great. It was looking pink and they were actually starting to function. So, um, we, uh, so I, nobody wanted her cause she's blind. Uh, and so I decided to keep her, but um, as I said in previous interviews, that's not been her limitation whatsoever. She's just an amazing little cat. She can get all over my home in Florida. And I have three stories on my home in Florida. She literally could go from the top floor <laughs> to the third floor and find anything. She <laughs> she <laughs> finds ledges that I, I'll go past. I'll see her sitting on a ledge. And I'm like, how did you know that was there? So she's, she's really been an amazing cat. Uh, she's the sweetest cat. And uh, I have another cat, Cashmere, and he was a little jealous of her at first, but uh, I think he teaches her some pretty bad habits. So. <laughs> you have to keep them apart as much as possible. You don't want them talking or you've got double the trouble with that. Uh, time is going by so quickly. Lori Blitch, our guest on the program, talking about her book, Sapphire, a life that almost wasn't. Talk about some of the the themes, some of the the issues that you bring up in the book. The book is entertaining. It's not designed. Uh, it's not. It doesn't read like an educational book. It's it's entertaining. But you get lessons as you're reading. Talk about some of the the themes that you discuss in the book because many of them are relevant today in the in the real world. It is. It talks about the value of life, uh, and we see the debasement of life every day in this country anymore. And it's actually escalated. It's it's getting worse. Uh, and and I will just speak for this country, but also the world. But let's, I'm just going to keep it on this country. We have just seen the debate debasement of life. Uh, politicians signing in legislation to devalue life, and uh, then we expect our children to do what's right when we as adults aren't doing what's right either. So we teach them one thing, but then on the other hand, they see us as adults doing another and children learn by what they see and hear. Yes. And when they see adults and hear adults doing this, then they begin to question it. And then they begin to follow down that same path that adults are doing. And, you know, you, you see any more people going in, sh shooting up school, they'll shoot up, uh, Anything uh, going into a mall, going into concerts, like what happened in Las Vegas and things of that type. And, and we just see a tremendous amount of uh, mental illness. So I wanted to teach children that all life has value. That value may not have significance to someone else or to them, but it certainly has significance to someone um, and we, we look at values are basically a statement of what matters to a person in the nation. And as morality goes, um, people tend to become more uncomfortable in their environment. And what we've done is we've just devalued life so much and we've kind of airbrushed God out of the public arena. And now we've got a toxic brew that's a happening in this country. And so at least we have to start with our children when they're young so that we can teach them the value of life and also that every, not only just the value of life, but every life has human dignity to it. So, uh, so putting this book out there and I read, we read it to all of our students in my schools and uh, so that they can begin their pathway to uh, valuing all life. 
Now, and the book is so well received. The book is Sapphire, A Life That Almost Wasn't by Lori Blitch, our guest on the program. You can like kind of get information by going to our website, This Week in America. In just a second, we'll tell you where you can find the book. A couple minutes left in the program. Uh, I would think this book is is ripe for a sequel. Any plans to do uh, more of the story? I, I do. I'm expanding a little bit more on the story, talking about uh, Sapphire, kind of her adventures being a blind cat and uh, the surgery of her eyes and um, providing good medical treatment for animals is very important. So that is my sequel. It's coming out in, a, in about two months. I'm just oh, about done with it. I've had to uh, go back and change a lot of things on it because it just wasn't quite flowing the way I wanted it to. Uh, but yes, that's my plans with, with having the sequel on that book. Well, it was a time well spent, your spare time. Though. How do you find time to do all of this? I mean, we all only have 24 hours unless in, in Arizona <laughs> you pick up an extra couple hours a day. How do you find time for all of this? Well, I uh, one thing in the military they taught me as a naval officer for 20 years is that you got to stay incredibly focused yes. and disciplined. It, that's the key is just staying so focused and disciplined and don't let yourself become, um, your attention become diverted for anything else. You have to stay focused and disciplined on that one task. Where is the best place for people to go to get information on the book, Sapphire, A Life Almost, uh, that almost wasn't? They can. They can get it at all your major uh, retails. You can get it at Barnes & Noble, Books A Million. Um, you can also get it on Amazon and uh, Walmart, uh, Target. Everybody, all the big retailers do have it. And many other places online, thrift books, et cetera. Uh, it's in many different languages uh, around, the, around the world. So um, that's where they can purchase that book from. And... Um, I know Amazon a lot of times will, it'll be sold out on Amazon, and but then it's on print demand anyway. But uh, they can get it pretty much from any of the big retailers. And you'll find a lot of those links at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And uh, just a, a minute or so left here, but you dedicate this to the school nurse. You talked about her, a very special person, uh, uh, someone I would think as an employer, a very special person to have working for you, The uh, what she represents. And you really do a nice job in, uh, in dedicating the book to her. I do. My sequel, I'd ask permission from her husband, Dan, and her daughter, Danielle, who actually was a student in our school and graduated from our kinder prep program years ago. Uh, I asked both of them if it was okay that I dedicated it to Nurse Sue, and they said yes. Nurse Sue had worked, <clears throat> excuse me, worked for me for about 12, 12 years or so. She was a wonderful soul, and she just recently died this past January of um, cancer, and uh, she was just a tremendous soul, and she was a good employee, a hard worker, and she also, with her daughter, Danielle, helped raise these cats that we found, so she and I went back and forth for months raising these cats together, and uh, so when I sat down with this book, and to write it, I knew immediately I wanted to dedicate it to uh, my school nurse, Nurse Sue. But like I said, she was the kindest, gentlest, nicest soul. So there's a wonderful place in her in, he in heaven right now. Well, what a legacy she left. And I'm sure touching uh, so many kids and their families throughout the, her career and working for you. Uh, 30 seconds or so left. What are your plans? Anything else you're working on? The book and the sequel is almost done. You've got everything else. Any other projects you're involved in? Uh, yes, actually I am. <laughs> I'm currently working on a screenplay for this book so that we can get it into oh, a cartoon nice. for children. Nice. Uh, teaching them the value of life. And uh, so my, my goal is to write some more children's books and um, just kind of move along that path with it and turn those into screenplays. So those are kind of my current goals that I have right now. Well, it's just amazing. All the success that you have uh, have had in your businesses and education in particular and working with so many young people and, uh, and molding their lives. Sapphire, A Life That Almost Wasn't, the book we're talking about by Lori Blitch. You can uh, Google that. Lori is L-O-R-R-I-E. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You can link on directly to get information on Lori's book. Lori, the time went by way too quickly. Hopefully we can do this again. So much more we can talk about. Thank you for being with us on the program today. 
Well, thank you, Rick. It was a pleasure being on your show. It was great having you with us, Lori Blitch. Our guest, the book Sapphire, A Life That Almost Wasn't. Information, of course, on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.